Hey folks, Kevin here. Uh, again, sorry it's been so long since I uh, gave you a video. I got one of my cat friends, Sunshine, here helping me. And behind me is the uh, the chicken coop uh, and storage area and all, and, and the progress I've made. I guess the last video I, I showed, we had the um, the rafters all in place, uh, but didn't have the insulation on. I actually did record a short video showing the insulation, and uh, let me talk about that first. Uh, the insulation is a continuous, the, the roof insulation is a continuous layer of insulation that overlaps, just like in the last video uh, that I posted, showing that um, there are no uh, penetrations through the area. Again, over here, if we look at this wall, the structure is built from the inside and the two by sixes and the insulation isn't between the two by sixes. Now I can add insulation between those uh, later on if I want to, but there's three inches of, of insulation on the outside of those uh, structural supports. And the same thing happens and that insulation is continuous from all the way down five foot in the ground where the footer is, going all the way up without any uh, penetrations uh, through that or, or bridging of it. And that insulation continues. See, and the seams don't, uh, don't overlap so that there's uh, less of a chance of airflow or a thermal barrier. And let's see, you can actually see can I show this? I'm not sure how well that's all showing there, but the insulation is continuous. It's a complete envelope. Uh, and then uh, recently I've been putting the purlings on. Now, when you wrap the house with insulation all the way around to create a, a, a thermal envelope without there being bridges, as in typical construction, so your two by fours being uh, place and then your sheathing being put on the outside of it and then you put the insulation between the two by fours or between the rafters or between the ceiling joists. All of those studs or rafters are thermal bridges easily conducting the cooler or hotter temperature from one compartment to the other, from the outside to the interior compartment. So when you do that, uh, do it this way, the way that I've done it, you don't have an overhang. And in order to safely create an overhang, especially in, a, in the uh, northern area that we're in, and again, last year we got 14 foot of snow over the winter season. And uh, the thing we want to do is uh, have a steep enough pitch so that we don't have to shovel the roof off during the winter time. And we want to have the snow, either the structure be strong enough to hold all the weight of the compacted snow throughout the whole winter season. Or we want to have it a, st a steep slope so that it'll slide off, have the material be being easy to slide off. And I chose not to have it be too easy to slide off. As you can see on this roof, I have all these little uh, obstacles sticking up, which help to break the snow so it doesn't come off in a big sheet. Uh, when it came off of this building years ago when I had a uh, aluminum roof on this building, uh, it would come off before this uh, gambrel end was put on here uh, where the office is. Um, the snow would come off and darn near crush any vehicle underneath it. <laughs> so with, um, and the other reason to have a good overhang, uh, as you could see on my house over there, these are all two foot overhangs. And uh, the reason for that, and so and that's a passive solar home, that two foot overhang, now it's not sunny today. Here we're in central New York, lots and lots of clouds during the fall and uh, winter months. But uh, that two foot overhang completely creates a shadow during the uh, summer months over those upper windows. So the the uh, shadow created by the overhang from the pitch of the uh, from the angle of the sun being so high in the sky uh, doesn't allow the sun to come in and radiate and heat uh, the interior surface of of the building, the the inside of the building. 
But during the winter months, when the, snow, when the sun is lower in the sky, those windows receive a great deal of uh, radiant energy from the sun. So the overhang is really good. It helps to protect the siding as well. Uh, so you're not getting the wear and tear of the moisture coming down those walls. Uh, so there's a whole good reason for having it. But here, because we have so much snow, we want to have it good and strong. And the purlings have to go uh, uh, in the direction that they're going so that the, the screws that hold the uh, metal roof on uh, can all go in rows going right down to for its structural integrity to hold the metal roof on. And 2x4s are all we need, so all those up there are 2x4s. However, that's a 2x6, and I don't know if it's going to show up. We'll zoom in. At the bottom edge of the 2x6, I put a 45 degree bevel on it. And on the top of each one of these 2x4s that actually extend down through and create the overhang and create the, the, uh, the eave, the soffit that I'm going to build there. Uh, and the lower angle matches the pitch. So this is a 40 degree angle coming off here, but a 45 degree angle right up there where it hooks underneath that 2x6. So uh, that helps to prevent cantilever action by having that angle up underneath that 2x6. And uh, so I think I'll pop up there and you can get an idea of what this roof looks like from above. Hold on one moment. It's a little moist up here, so I'm going to be careful this morning, but I'm up on top of it. This is the chicken coop area over here, and you can see the insulation underneath all of the 2x4s. I'm using 2x6s along the peak. Double rows of 2x4s in the valleys coming down where each one of these different peaks uh, connect. And uh, you get an idea of where things are. One second here. <laughs> you can see down by my feet where I am. And here's one of the hipped roofs. Another valley. A workshop area. Some of the chickens down below. Well, it's morning here, a little bit overcast, but I wanted to show you this. Uh, today I'm going to get some measurements so I get exact, uh, exactly what I do need for the metal roof. I'd walk over to the other edge, but because there's moisture on the boards here now, I don't want to risk holding this camera and slipping. Okay, I think that's enough of an update for today. Uh, We'll see if we can get this metal roof on and get the doors and windows in so that I can work on this over the winter and get the, the chickens into their new home. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.